This video is the first video of a new series on the channel where we study famous architects and their work and then recreate their signature style of drawing. This video will look at the Egyptian architect Hassan Fathi and his design approach and then we will create a planned render inspired by this image. One of the first architects to break with modern architecture and seek a new framework based on a concept of interpreting forms and masses from the past, Hassan Fathi was a famous Egyptian architect also known as the architect of the poor. He was remarkable in believing that this language can exist alongside that of an intensely modern language which cuts all links to the past. In addition to the tireless efforts that he made to develop his traditional approach, he has devoted his entire career to enhancing the housing and living conditions of the poor. Fatih believed that the environment works better if people contribute positively to the creation of places where they live, work and play and are not treated as passive consumers. Perhaps Fatih's most significant contribution lies in his continuing resistance to the western form and the trend of universality in architecture. He favored architecture rooted in a region's place and history, as opposed to foreign internationalism rooted in a common technology and not common humanism. He wrote, In modern Egypt, there is no indigenous style. The signature is missing. The houses of rich and poor alike are without character, and without an Egyptian accent, the tradition is lost. He established his building systems through Islamic Arabic house concepts and Egyptian vernacular. Two such systems influence his thinking. Climate efficient buildings, ingeniously shaded and ventilated by their two-story rooms, mashrabiyas and courtyards, and mud brick architecture that is still to be seen in rural areas. The latter consists of inclined arches and vaults built without shuttering, domes built over square rooms, semi-domed alcoves, and other related forms. But his career was defined by the difficulties he faced in gaining commissions as he was considered a threat to certain commercial building interests. However, his projects continued to focus on function, history, and the environment as he designed homes that met the needs of the Egyptian family. He died in 1989, yet remembered to this day as the architect of the poor and a pioneer in vernacular architecture. This is the plan render we will be creating today. I'm really happy with how it came out. I feel like it's really close to the original despite it being kind of on a different angle as well as the wall thickness because in vernacular architecture they have really thick walls. We're gonna start in SketchUp and I'm going to create a box to create a true exonometric view. Group it so that I can rotate it really easily and I'm going to rotate it to 45 degree angle and then rotate it again at a 45 degree angle and I'm going to then move it to where I want to position the view and then click inside the group onto a face and align the view. Make sure you go into camera and select parallel projection so that it's true exonometric and then save the scene. This is the scene with the true exonometric as well as this already in SketchUp. Can you see the difference? So now we're going to go into file, export and export that as a PDF. And I'm going to add it into Illustrator just for two things which is to add a gray fill to mimic the gray fill on the original plan. But I later found out that you can do that in SketchUp as well but it's also a good place to make sure that the line weight is correct. So I'm just going to add a very thin line weight. And then I'm going to crop the image using the artboard tool and try to make it as a vertical image as best as I can, but I don't have that much context. But the best thing about Illustrator is that you can draw it and it will still be high quality. So I'm just going to delete the lines that I don't need and then draw the rest so that it matches the image. And then I'm going to export that again as a PDF and then open that in Photoshop. So now one thing that I found in Fatih's plan, which was done by gouache and by hand, trying to replicate that by drawing in the stroke on the section cut. You can obviously do that in SketchUp, but I do like how when you draw it by hand, you have a few mistakes here and there and it just makes it a bit more hand drawn kind of and less of a computer image. color the background with this light yellow orange color and then I'm going to select the green spaces and color that with one of the greens. I'm 
my plan had contour levels so I'm going to select those and color that with a darker color. I also colored in the water from the tree that was in the image. So now as you can see the grass is not fully grass, it has a mixture of grass and sand so to achieve that effect I'm going to add color overlay of yellow and then add a clip-in mask and then using kind of like a grunge texture brush. As you can see I'm switching between white and black to try and blend this as much as possible so I'm just adding kind of a texture on the grass and the street and the water. The reason why I don't think you should do it on the individual layers is because this is an easy way which you can edit it and lower its opacity instead of lowering the opacity of say the water and the grass. So now I'm going back into SketchUp just to export the shadows and if you go into styles and hide the edges and then you can go into edit and also hide the section fill and then turn the section lines into white. So this is where I found out that you can actually change the section fill so you could have just skipped the illustrator part and used this method to just change it into gray. So I'm exporting the shadows as they are and I'm going to align them the best that I can. If you have a good way of aligning these things please let me know because I really hate how in SketchUp if I export the same scene it will always be different and it's so annoying. Clean the section fill because we hid them from SketchUp it kind of shows shadows from within. Going back to the original image kind of had a white border so use the crop tool and extend the edge of the paper just a tiny bit just to create a white frame and now I'm gonna start adding textures and overlay so I found this texture of like an old stained paper add that to my image and change the blending mode until I feel that it works so this time it worked for a darker color but it might be different in your case try darker color or overlay or multiply and see which one works best I was really happy with the image and how it kind of matched exactly the original image which was so crazy but i'm gonna add the clip-in mask and then using the grunge texture again going to blend the texture to kind of make it less obvious and then i'm going to add this paper it's not a good quality image but it's the only one that i found because i was really interested in the edge of the paper so i'm going to add a clip-in mask again and then basically hide everything except the edge to give it that stained old paper look And I'm also going to add some textures and these are all images that I found under old paper filter overlays and things like that. Any scratches or white stains would be nice. So again, just add all of those, add the clip-in mask and just blend them. So now I'm going to group everything that I did into group, add this image which is another old paper texture but this time I want to add a clip and mask so that I can get that rough edge. So group everything and then I'm going to add a clip and mask to the group to achieve that. And I also noticed that his tiled spaces are slightly darker color so I'm just going to add a slight orangey color to those. And there's also this kind of an orange line in the middle which I think is really nice. Bit more focus into the image and it draws your eyes into there. So I'm just going to paint that really loosely and lightly and then add a clipping mask over it and blend it. So at this point you'll see that I added trees but I eventually decided they were horrible so 
ignore that i'll show you how to add the nicer trees at the end so at this point i was like you know what i don't really like the edge because it looks too crisp using Control alt and e i merged all of the layers together and then added that into the background moved that all the way under all of the layers to the background and then just made it bigger so this kind of blends everything together but it still looks different and it kind of looks as if it was folded so i was really interested in this rough edge and i was trying to achieve it as best that i can so i found this paper which again is not very good quality but it's the best that i found and, and then i'm going to add a clipping mask and try to blend it just so that i can get that edge So now let's get back into trees. So I first started with adding trees that are kind of similar style from the original image, but there weren't any good images that matched it precisely. So I decided to change the style into a more of a realistic tree. So I found this cherry blossom tree that kind of had the same shape. And then to get a realistic blue tree is kind of hard because there isn't any blue trees, which is so sad because it's my favorite color. But instead I got this green tree and then using the hues and saturation changed it into blue, which I think works really well. So lastly, I'm going to press Ctrl, Alt and E and merge all of the layers together. Convert that into a smart object because then it makes it easier for you to go back in and edit any of these settings. So I'm going to go into Camera Raw Filter and then change the exposure, contrast and all that. Edit it to how you like it. And I'm going to also go into FX and add a slight grain to the image. As you can see, it really amps up the effect of this old image style. And then this is the final image. As I said, I'm really happy with how it came out. This was such a fun experiment to try and recreate someone else's style. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm thinking to do Zaha Hadid next. So get this video to maybe 3000 thumbs up if you want to see that video. And don't forget that now you can book a call with me on Super Peer if you have any questions or you would like feedback or help on your projects. You can also find additional services on my Fiverr page, which will all be linked in the description box. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you have not already and let me know in the comments down below if you knew about Hassan Fathi what do you think about his architecture let me know in the comments down below I'm Rasha Shururu and I will see you next time